Good evening and welcome to Pigskin Chronicles. Playing professional football is a dream of many and a wonderful reality for only a few. And for those rare and special athletes who do get the opportunity to play football for a living, no matter how long or short their careers may be, their football experiences can make for some wonderful conversation. Tonight we're going to be rapping with Daryl Hopper. Hops hit a few sleds in his career in the NFL with the Chargers and Raiders, in the CFL with Edmonton and Ottawa, in the Arena League with Arizona. I think wherever there was a league, Daryl's played in it. Welcome to Pigskin Chronicles, Hop. My pleasure, Larry. Nice to have I'm you sure, here. Man. You know, before we get into this, Daryl, I think it's only fair to let people know that you and I go way back about 15 years. About 15, 16. Yeah, so we got a lot to cover tonight. Indeed. Uh, you know, before we get into your pro career, there is one thing I do want to touch on. Both of us from the L.A. City school system. Indeed. Okay. Best in the world. That's right. And it's, you know, back in the day when you played, when I played, and I'm a little older than you are. Just LA, a tad bit. Just a tad bit. <laughs> L.A. City high schools, that's where it was all about, not the CIF. We dominated. And if yeah. you made all league and all city, you were something hot. Well, back then, you know, back in the day, if you made all city, if you were second team all city, you're considered a good ball player. Well, Daryl, you're being pretty modest because, Daryl, weren't you the uh, L.A. City player of the year, your senior year? I believe so. Yeah. In case you don't know, Daryl played his uh, football at Carson High School, which was a, a manufacturing facility for football players. Well, I was blessed in a sense, you know, being born in the area, raised in the area. We had a chance to be coached under uh, Coach Volnagel, who's one of the most renowned high school football coaches of our time. Um, you know, however you want to look at it, man, I was blessed. Yeah, well, that senior year, Daryl, I know that uh, you set a L.A. City high school record, which still stands today, 12 picks in your senior year. Does it? That's right. I mean, I, I, I'm not aware of that. Well, you know, it is I'm, true. I, ch I checked it out. In fact, uh, before you had that season, the record for L.A. City high schools was 12 picks in a career, which you almost doubled the record with 21 picks, 12 in your senior year alone. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> but the <laughs> nice real story, the real story, the reason I brought it up is because being City Player of the Year is something special, but you played that whole season hurt. Yeah. You know, being, Let's talk being, about that. Being City Player of the Year, yeah, it is special. Being from Los Angeles and being at, this is like the mecca for football. Um, like I say, not only the United States, but the world. But, uh, you know, when I, when I played Larry, I didn't, I didn't go after records. You know, I, I didn't set out to, to go out and try to break somebody's record. I set out to try to be the best I could, you know. And um, my junior year, I remember telling my, my brother, my older brother, who was you know, a pretty good football player in his own right, and a few other players that you, know, you might have heard of that went on to play NFL ball, that I was going to be City Player of the Year. You know, and I was just talking. I mean, I, was, I wasn't bragging. I was just confident. And uh, people, you know, my dad used to always say, boy, don't talk, don't brag, don't count the chickens before they hatch. Just go out there and do what you have to do. I said, well, I'm doing what I have to do. You know, I spoke about it. And um, unfortunately, I got hurt um, before the season started. And uh, you know, the doctor wanted to put a cast on my wrist. I, I broke my wrist and didn't even know it. And the doctor wanted to put a cast on my wrist, and I was like, no, I got to get a scholarship. I have to go to school, you know. And um, there's only one way I could do that. I couldn't afford to pay it. So I had to go out and perform. So you, let me get this straight. You played your entire senior season at Carson High School with a broken wrist. Indeed. And you never told Volnagel about it? Actually, I never told him it was broke. I told him it was hurt, you know, had a little sprain, but um, we also had a, we had an assistant uh, head coach by the name of uh, Hebner, who was, um, you know, he was this genius man at, at making things up. You know, he made up this, this gizmo and put it on my wrist, which uh, didn't allow my wrist to bend and hurt me, but of course I couldn't pick off any balls or, or catch any balls with it, so eventually I took it off and just played with the pain. Now, you played both ways your senior year. Yes, I did. You were played wide receiver, too. Yeah. And you also punted, right? Indeed. And that came in handy later at SC. Now, you said you played that whole season with the broken wrist because you had to get a scholarship. I had to. I mean, if, if I had to put a cast in my hand, the, the referees would have let me play. That would have been my season, season over with. Um, I wouldn't have would been able to play the sport that, you know, I enjoy playing or I enjoy playing through my life, you know. so. The doctor said he wanted to put a cast on. At the time, 
the bone that I broke was the navicular bone, the scaphoid, small bones in your wrist. I mean, That's not for good. those out there who are doctors, you know what I'm talking about, the navicular scaphoid. But anyway, I had a, I had a broke bone, and uh, it required uh, eight months of being in the cast and immobile. Now, when you came out, being the L.A. City Player of the Year, and you, you, you got a city championship that year? Actually, no, we lost. Now, isn't the, is that where you played against the now Hall of Famer? Which one are you talking about? There's a few Hall of Famers. From the, from the Valley, a Valley boy who's now in the Hall of Fame? Actually, uh, or he's about to go into the Hall well, of Fame? Well, actually, you know, your, your history is one year off. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. I know you're so, talking so, about, yeah. So let me hear, my, you, you've my, never been burned. My first varsity game was, was against uh, John Elway, um, who played for Granada Hills. And that was our first preseason game. We went out to Granada Hills. And uh, I had actually watched John Elway play in a preseason game before when I was in 10th grade, we went and scouted him. And um, yeah, I'm watching this guy play, and, and I'm saying to myself, you know, I really don't want to get out on the field. You know, this guy, John Elway, had an arm of a grown man in the 10th grade. So, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm nervous, you know, and I didn't want to get in the game. We went out there. The first three passes he threw, we were up, uh, they were up 21 to nothing, and I'm on the bench. And we had a guy that was going both ways by the name of uh, Craig Lord. <laughs> What's up, Black? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> anyway, um, you know, I mean, it was it was it was it was it was, it was, it was kind of tough on the guy in the city. You know, we playing playing both ways was tough. So the coaches um, decided to put me in after the guy said, "Well, look, they call me Pook. Put Pook in, and um, let's see what he can do." And uh, I said, "Hey, I'm taking on the challenge." And, and Coach Volnegro said, "I want you to get in there." And there was a guy by the name of Paul Bergman who actually went to the NFL, went to UCLA. He was All-American. At the time, he was one of the biggest guys in high school. I'm 5'11", 6 feet, 150, 60 pounds, and this guy is like 6'2", 225. And they said, I want you to stick and stay on this hip the whole time. And um, they were up 21 nothing in the first uh, quarter. And we ended up winning the game 48-21. Now, when you came out, being all city player of the year, I imagine you could have had your choice of where you wanted to go to school. This is true. Weren't you heavily recruited? This is true. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about it. Where were you where where was your first, you know, wish where you wanted to go? Well, where you thought you were going to go? Actually, you know what, coming up in the city, you know, growing up in Los Angeles is, is one thing. Um, you know, it's a lot of things growing up in Los Angeles. I mean, Los Angeles man is a is a smorgasbord. I mean, it's a, it's a big, not even a pond, it's an ocean. And it's real easy to get lost, you know. And me being the curious guy that I am, you know, um, yeah, I wasn't a follower. I was just a curious guy. So everything intrigued me. So um, I was anxious kind of to get away from Los Angeles, get away from the life. A lot of things were going on. And my first choice, actually, after I took my, um, my recruiting trips, was to go to Washington. And after a little thought and a little persuasion, you know, through my family, you know, I, I changed my mind and stayed home. You committed to Don James, didn't you? I committed to Don James, yeah. I love, I mean, Washington was a beautiful city, you know. Um, University of Washington was a beautiful uh, school, but I actually chose California over Washington, you know, for the simple fact that all my family could stay and, and come to the games and, and watch me play, which they had followed me out throughout since I was in Pop Water. You know, my, my family's always followed me. Um, yeah, that was my decision right there. That, that was the, the turning yeah. point. Wasn't it specifically more for your mom than anybody else? Indeed. Moms never missed the game, man. You know, moms was always there. So uh, did you ever see James after that, after you changed your mind on him? Yeah, when we played him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, James and a guy named name Chick Harris, who was the recruiter for Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you went to SC. Yeah. You chose to play at SC. Mm -hmm. You happy about that? You sorry about that? How do you feel about your days at USC? You know, I have mixed emotions about it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I went to school with SC. I mean, I'm, I'm a Trojan forever. Um, but I do have mixed emotions because Coach Robinson was the guy who brought me in. You know, he's a phenom, man. Coach Robinson is one of a kind. Um, if you ever got a chance, I'm sure you met him. Mm -hmm. You know how he is, man. As a, as a, he's a, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a man's, coach. he's a man's man. You know what I mean? Not just a player's coach. He's a man's man. You know, and he's, uh, 
you know, the thing he strives for, the thing he pushes most is uh, respect. You know, he has respect, he has as much respect for us as we did, you know, for, for, for adults, which I was, I was brought up just to respect my, my elders anyway. But Coach Robinson, you know, I'm 17 years old, and he, he's giving me respect, you know, and he's saying, look, I don't care what you do, all I want you to do is respect the next man. And, and that's what he taught us, and that's, and that's why I respected him as much as I did. But unfortunately, he left after two years and went to coach the Rams, and um, it was a change on the guard. And, and you know, things kind of changed at SC, which, you know, I'm, you know, I was a little bitter about, but uh, it was out of my control, so. Didn't you also get injured while you were at USC? Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, my freshman year, I broke uh, radius on the, I broke all the bones in his arm right here. Was that the same wrist that was broken? No, that was the opposite. <laughs> no, it was my whole arm from wrist on up, you know, got cut under about 500, 600 pounds, you know, and broke yeah. that one, but. Now, <clears throat> you came back from your injuries at SC, right. and you had a very distinguished career. Right. At one time, they got in a pinch for a punter. Right. They said, well, Daryl punted in high school, let's put him in. Right. And well, you averaged 55 yards a punt at USC. Yeah. Talk about that. Um, I say I was blessed, you know, and when I practiced, you know, I practiced everything right. I was fortunate enough, too, to have a, it was a guy by the name of uh, Mr. Ordonis, who his son kicked for Arkansas. And he Is that actually Ray Ordonis? Uh, Ishmael. No, oh, okay. Ishmael Ordonis. His dad was our, um, his dad played soccer. You know, and he was a professional soccer player. Oh. And Ishmael was our kicker. Well, he, he actually kicked my brother. He was played with my older brother. And he went to Arkansas, kicked for Arkansas, and he played in the NFL for a few years. But his dad knew everything. I mean, he knew all the mechanisms about kicking, man. I mean, to the point to where I've, I've never seen any other coach in life. Wherever, I mean, I've played in a lot of leagues, and I've seen a lot of coaches. But this guy knew more about kicking than anybody I've ever met in my life. And, I, and when he told me to do something, I did it. And everything I told, he told me to do was right. You know, I mean, everything he told me, I mean, from the, from the bend of the knee, I mean, everything he told me about kicking was right, and I practiced it. I practiced over and over after practice in high school. I'd stay after practice, and I'd kick, and I'd kick, and I'd kick. So, I mean, I was good at it, you know. I mean, I'm not going to lie about it. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm just being modest. Yeah, I'm not bragging on it, but, yeah, I, I actually. But that know, wasn't your main ticket. Your thing was defense. Well, playing the corner. Actually, you know what, Larry? My, my main ticket was football. I enjoyed the game. I enjoyed the competitiveness of, just, of the whole game. I like playing on every side of the ball, each side of the ball. I like, I mean, whatever I have to do to win, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, and, and this, back then, when we played ball, we played to win. Mm -hmm. Whoever had to do whatever, if, 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 if a running back had to play guard, you played guard to win. I mean, um, that was the difference in then and now from what I see. I could be wrong, but I know back then, you know, if I had to play a position, I'd play it. It didn't matter. I just wanted to win. Now, when you were uh, getting ready to come out your senior year uh, at SC, mm -hmm. you were coming out very, very highly touted. I mean, you were Dion before Dion was Dion. Probably You'd like so. to jam you guys at the line, huh? You heard that too? Uh, listen, I talked to you all your that? friends. I, I know yeah, everybody. Right. You know, okay. I heard about you. Ronnie Lott told me about you when you yeah, played with okay. the Raiders. Well, right. But, you know, you had that kind of talent. Right. You had that kind of speed. Right. And then something happened right before the draft. Your yeah, last yeah. career college game. Last college game, yeah. Talk about that. What happened? <laughs> Man, give me some tissue. I might start crying again. Yeah, you know well, what I'm saying? Yeah, have, have some coffee. No. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know um, yeah, I, I went through, you know, I had, I had a nice career at SC, but in my last college game against uh, Notre Dame in the Coliseum, um, which is ironic, it was the only game it ever rained. The, it rained for about four hours straight, the whole game. You know, the only game through my career I played in where it rained for four hours straight. And the SC in Notre Dame is a, is a big rivalry. And we had a little squabble before the game. And um, during the second, I think it was the first or second series, it was a guy that, you know, I'm not gonna mention no names, you know, because, you know, I'm not, that's, that's back in the day. Um, this guy came, and after the play was over, he circled around, and he kind of clipped me. And he, he threw all his weight on my knee, and I heard the pop. And, um, you know, I was kind of hoping it was something else that popped, you know, but uh, I kind of knew what it was. And I didn't lay down on the field. I just hobbled off, you know, with my, 
the strength that I had, went to the sideline, oh, Dr. Deal did the old test on him. My knee went all the way over here. He said, meet me in the, um, meet me at the hospital at, at 5 o'clock in the morning. Don't eat or drink after 12. Surgery. Surgery. So you went from being potentially a top 10 pick in the draft right. to not getting drafted. Not getting drafted at all, yeah. Not Still haunts me today. You know, you know, a lot of folks think, oh, that's just a, you know, it's just a game, this and that. But you know, when you've been playing for all your life, you know, you played ball all your life. You know, that was your dream. It was like your dream was snatched away from you, man, within not even a second. You know, and then too, for it to be so cheap, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like dying. You know, who wants to die cheap? You know, and uh, that's what I felt like. You know, when that when that moment happened, it felt like somebody just walked up from behind me and shot me in the head. You know what I mean? But you did rehab. I did rehab. And you did walk on. Yes. With, what was it, Seattle? I went to Seattle, yeah, after six months of surgery. Yeah, six months after, after surgery, I, I went to the Seattle Seahawks. You lasted all the way through the preseason. I actually made the team, actually. I mean, back then, you know, um, they held seven DBs. And I made it through a guy by the name of Dave Brown, who played with Kenny Easley. He was uh, all pro that, that year, and he had sat out and wanted more money. And he was one of the seven DBs up there. And I actually made the team, which would surprise me. And um, that next day, after the first practice, I went back to my uh, dorm room, and there was a note on my bed. It said, come see Chuck Knox. And I'm saying, well, you know, what's happening, you know? I hadn't heard the news that Dave Brown had came back to camp, you know, and you know, Chuck Knox said, unfortunately, son, you know, you had a good, you had a good, uh, a good camp. but." Um, you got caught up in a numbers game, and if anybody gets hurt, we'll, you be the first one that we'll call back, and you know nobody got hurt. <laughs> and, and you and you, I, I know you, Daryl, very well, and yeah. I know you had more talent than some of the guys that were there. But that's where some of the politics does come in to football that a lot of people really aren't aware of the politics. Well, Whether yeah. you're drafted versus not drafted, money's well, yeah. committed. Yeah, there is a lot of politics in the game. You know, folks don't realize. You know, we talk about big money. You mind if I go ahead and have some coffee? Thank you. Mm. Politics in every profession, in the corporations, but I would say you know, um, it's politics in football. I mean, especially I mean, it may it may not seem like that to a lot of people because you have a lot of guys that's hiding behind a face mask, a lot of guys that's hiding behind rooms, hiding under pads. You know, you really can't see the talent that they that they have. There's a, there's a lot of guys out there who could have been all pros that I've seen fall by the wayside. Um, it's a political game, especially now with all the money involved. Whenever you have money involved, it's going to be politics. Um, unfortunately, you know the politics steps into a game that these kids, you know, been playing all their lives, and, and you know it kind of takes away the fun of it. Mm -hmm. I would I wouldn't say so much then as of now, but the politics was definitely there back then. I'm not going to blame on the politics. You know, a lot of it was my fault. A lot of it was uh, was nature. Mm -hmm. You know. Now, after Seattle, you didn't just quit or give up. No, no, no. You you hooked on with the Chargers, right? I hooked on with the Chargers, yeah. Yeah, I and, went down there. and you started tearing it up down there. Yeah, yeah. Talk about that. <laughs> well, you know, that was a strike year. You know, okay. that was a strike year. And um, they were talking about, you know, the guys were talking about, well, you're going to cross the line. And I said, man, look, I'm broke. You know what I'm saying? I got I to gotta play. There's one way I can get in, and that's, that's for me to play. You know, I mean, I, I play for fun. You know, so I had a chance to play. I wasn't involved in any unions or none of that stuff. So I decided to play in the strike games. Played the strike games, performed. Um, when the NFL season resumed, I was told to go on this side of the room where they, they kept like four or five guys from the strike team. And I was on the team, you know. But something, you know, my ignorance to the game, my ignorance just to life, you know, kind of interfered. At that time, you know, I was close to home. I was in L.A., surrounded by a lot of negativism, you know. Um, I just wasn't mature, you know, and nobody, I didn't have anybody really to tell me what was going on. Um, running back and forth to L.A., back in those days, get you in trouble. And uh, I was warned by, uh, a mentor of mine, I'm not gonna mention any names, but he told me, he said, boy, stop going back and forth to LA. You know, LA's, you know, it's, it's hell. So mm -hmm. uh, I ignored it. And eventually 
it was my downfall. You know, I went back there, you know, messed up a little bit. So you didn't listen to the coach? It wasn't the coach. It was, it was me. It wasn't the coach, you know, that told, told me not to go back and forth to L.A. It was another, it was, it was another peer mm -hmm. of mine who, who knew all so well about the Los Angeles life. The temptations the in temptations L.A. The temptations of the professional game in Los Angeles, you know. And, uh, no, what were you going to say? Well, before you, we, we know you went up to Canada, and I want to talk a little bit about Canada, but before yeah. we did that, you still had one more shot, and that was with the Raiders. Yeah. After your days with the Chargers. Well, actually, no, that came after I went to Canada. Oh, it did? Yeah. Okay, well, you went up to Canada. And went before, to Canada. Before we get into Canada, you know, I, I've known you for so long, and I, we've talked so many stories and so forth. You always speak very fondly of right. your days in Canada. What yeah. is it about the CFL that you like so much? It was a nice vacation. I mean, that's the way I looked at it. I mean, I, I was actually happy to get out to the United States when I went because of all the, the, the BS that I went through down here. And just, you know, the pressures of, of like I say, I, I've, I've always played, I mean, I went to high school in L.A., went to college in L.A., um, played professional sports right down the road. I was just happy to get away and, and you know, see something new. And I'd heard about Canada. So when I went up there, it was like a relief, you know. I was able, I was able to work, um, kind of clear my mind up a little bit. Did you play both ways up there? I yeah, a couple plays, yeah, yeah. A couple Mostly plays. defense. Mostly defense. Wasn't though, the yeah. larger field also larger suited field, for, for your type suited of suited for my game? You know, tough on the corner. I got a surprise for you. You're not going to believe this, Timmy. If you got that that uh, shot, we can cue it up. Check out the monitor, Dale. Take a look. <laughs> I had to do some major research to pick that. <laughs> Check it out. Where'd you find that picture? I don't even have a picture like that, that man. That's, that's your one of the football cards, huh? card. That's your CFL Check football you card. Number 91. You know, that's what I want to ask you about that. That's when you played with the Ottawa Rough Riders. Indeed, yeah. And you don't know, I had to find that through the internet. Did you? I, I couldn't found a find private one. collector who had that card, and he, Damn, he, he charged me for it. Like, you know, that's you can right. have that card. Thank but you. Thank what you. I noticed about it, number 91. Yeah. What's that all about? I mean, that's a defensive lineman's number. What's I was, that? You know, I was always odd when, you know, they asked me, up in the CFL, you can wear any number you want at any position. And um, I said, well, you know, I always thought I was a perfect 10 on the corner. So I said, well, number 10 wasn't available. Nine plus one equals 10. So I said, give me 91. Let me... Let me catch their reaction on this one, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I was wondering where Dennis Rodman got it, because it well, went back yeah. in the 90s. Oh, yeah. We talk about OG. D-Rod wasn't the first one to do this, you know? <laughs> He's eccentric. I'm not as eccentric as he is. Don't, don't get so me you, wrong. I'm not me? no he took Dennis it from Rodman. You? I'm not saying that. <laughs> but, you know, he did play with Detroit. Otto was right outside. He might have saw a few games, you know, the local station said, damn, number 91 on the corner? She said, mm -hmm. let me get number 90. I'm not. Hey, D-Rod, if you see this ever. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you know, I'm getting a cue here that we got about five minutes left. And, I mean, there's so much still to talk about. We haven't got into any of the stories that I wanted to cover. But real quickly, you, you've, you also played in the, in the Arena League with Danny White yeah. uh, at Arizona. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but yeah. of all the places you played, do you have a favorite coach that you played for? Oh, man, no question. Coach Robinson. Robinson at USC. Yeah, my freshman and sophomore year, man, at SC, were, that was the best years of my life. Man. And, you know, one more thing I, I wanted to bring up, you know, because my, one of my favorite players of all time, mm -hmm. favorite running back of all time, happens to be your cousin, Hall of Famer. Yeah, Earl. Earl Campbell. Yeah. You were born in Texas, weren't you? Actually, no, I, was born in, I was born in Los Angeles. Um, but uh, my father, of course, is from Tyler, Texas. Mm -hmm. My mom's from Baton Rouge. But uh, Earl is, uh, that's my cousin. And uh, he's one of my favorites, too. You know, I mean, raw bone, tough, you know, it's in the blood. <laughs> it's in the blood. <laughs> in so the blood. Coach Robinson's your favorite coach. Uh, you know, you, you, you've talked, when you played with the Raiders, you and I have spent a lot of time talking. You, you mentioned Ronnie Lott, and he's a. That's my, that's my, that's my favorite. Ryan Lightman is the catalyst. He's the best football player I've ever seen, ever. You know, people would talk about, you know, we talk about different positions and this and that, but a person, you know, and, and believe it, and I, I love Joe, Joe Montana, to me, is the best quarterback to, to ever lace him up. 
But Ronnie Lott, as a football player, man, to, to, to make an impact on the game, man, he bought it. You know, he bought it every play. I mean, Ronnie had his mentality was to separate the man from the ball, as Coach Robinson used to say, separate the man from the ball. And Ronnie's attitude was like that every single play. I got one league. final question for you. Okay, we're getting the signal here. If you knew then. DS was the same way too. Dennis Smith was the same way too. Dennis Smith. No, yeah, that was the other same. Oh, thing. I'm not being right. prejudiced either because they both chose. They was both hard nosed. But <laughs> if you knew then, when you were in the NFL, what you know now. You know, and of course, now in the, the whole league has changed since 93, and that, the CBA, the collective bargaining agreement in 93 has changed it. You would have been in your prime about 93. You knew then what you knew now. Would you do anything differently? Yeah, yeah, I would. Make, I know it's a heavy question, I don't, but make it kind yeah, of short. I don't, I don't have any regrets, but yeah, I would do things differently for the fact that what I know now, I'm, I'm, I'm a little more mature, I'm smarter. Um, I understand um, the politics of the game. But I also understand myself, you know, I've, 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 over these past years, I've learned to understand me, you know, who I am, um, which would make all the difference in the world. So, yeah, I would do things differently. And, yeah, I, I, I would pray to God that I would still be out there. Well, you know, Daryl, uh, I've been out there playing ball with you. You and I have worked some other players out. I know what kind of talent you have. Right. You came out of your mama's belly with that speed. You can't coach speed, Indeed. you know. Um, I was blessed. You know, I feel lucky to have you as, as my friend, Thank my you. brother. Thank We've you. been together a long Likewise, time, man. and it's going to go on for a long time. We'll We've remain. been through a lot together. We'll remain. Listen, on that note, we're going to have to wrap it up. Thank you for being here, Hop, and sharing with us. It's Thank been you. great. We could go for hours. We didn't get to any of the really, you know, <laughs> juicy stuff time. that I wanted to Maybe get next to. Time. But, okay. you know, playing professional football uh, can be a wonderful reality for a few. And if you're one of the few that has that God-given ability, don't waste it. You know right from wrong. Stay on the path. Don't let anybody or anything get in your way. Until next time, I'm Larry Megan. Peace, love, and all good things. <laughs>